Welcome back to the Commanders of the Coast podcast. I'm your host, Steven. I'm your bi host, Ben. <laughs> and I'm your tri host, Josh, Arch, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> yeah, and this week we're actually discussing some pretty uh, interesting topics. We're going to see how each one of us defines CEDH and how we decide uh, on power level. Do you want to start us off, Ben? I think this is your I will CEDH is your category. Oh, boy. Okay, no. Just because so I'm, you know. I don't now, think you've now, actually just to make it clear for everyone, everyone listening out here, we don't we don't play competitively. Um, well, one of us does. One of us does. Anywho, just just to give you guys a preface, we, we don't we don't play CEDH. We do just play casual to to an extent. So we'll go ahead and uh, let Ben go ahead and get. All right. Let's that. just remember that no matter what, we are trying to win the game, though. So correct. Technically, correct. we are competitive mm-hmm. in that sense. But CEDH, yes. like the actual term CEDH, I feel like a lot of people don't understand it. I mean, they, they understand a, a bit of it, but until you play against an actual CDH deck, then you're like, oh, okay, well, this is awkward. So I feel like the the main thing of CDH is speed and power. Mm-hmm. Like speed, like as in fast mana, they call it. Like, you know, your zero mana mana crypts or things like that that just mm-hmm. get you all this mana turn one to get that sets you up for a turn two win or even turn three. Not necessarily like, okay, this is going to be a long grinding game and I'm going to win at turn 15 by some crazy combo that I'm going to complain about even though they set up the board as opposed to, hey, there is nothing you could have done about it when you had only two lands in your board Mm. and I had the same amount of lands but my cards just give me a better advantage. Yeah. I, like I agree. I think um, the closest I've come to playing against a CDH player was like about a year ago. Um, it's a very fond memory of mine. Uh, we had like a mini Magic Fest at Arch's house, and um, myself. I think, I believe it was all three of us in the same game, maybe with four other people or three other people. And I've never. I don't know that anyone considers Maelstrom Wanderer a, um, you know, a CDH card, but somehow this person managed to to put it into play in like turn three. And we proceeded to lose in what was one of the longest interactions and most. um, It was a food chain. It just, yeah, it was so ridiculous. Uh, And I think that's, I I agree with you. I I joke about it a lot, but I don't think anyone of us plays CDH. I don't. Most people here don't pop off within, you know, two or three turns. Um, I will say I think that as someone who doesn't play Infinite, I don't like Infinite. If you play Infinite, I automatically assume it's CDH, even if it's not. I still like to just tie it together. I just don't think it's a fun interactive play style. but I agree that I think we, you know, I throw on the term jokingly a lot, but I don't think any of us come close to it, really. No. Yeah, um, to, 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 to touch up a little bit more on that, um, when it comes to infinite combos, I'm okay with them, but only in the very, very late state of the game. Like, if a game feels like it's been dragging, I'm like, someone throw an infinite? Bless your soul. My lands have been destroyed. I've been uh, meek stoned. <laughs> come on, somebody. <sighs> Somebody do okay, something here. Okay, but let me let, so let me ask you this then, because you mentioned land destruction. So here's the thing: as a whole, we don't really play land destruction. I think maybe if some of us play a couple like <clears> destroy <throat> one land, but we don't play like mass land, no Armageddon's, nothing like that. Um, I don't con- I don't consider that CDH, but I think that's unfun. I think yeah. if you're going to use Armageddon, I feel it's like unfun. There is uh, like stacks type yeah. decks that just yeah. stop you from playing the game. I don't consider that CDH either because they, for the most part have no way to win either they're just trying yeah. to watch the world burn yeah. type of thing mm-hmm. you know after, which is you know, in the beginning I, I thought the same way like because uh stacks is not fun you know land destruction is not fun i mean at least in our own personal opinions but yeah. I, I don't mind it if you want to play that way if that's the way you want to play magic if that's how you have fun go ahead and do so just know mm-hmm. i'm going to be hitting you as yeah fast that's as the main thing yeah you have to be able to understand that when everyone's attacking you, you can't complain about it. Yeah, like <laughs> because you know mm-hmm. what you're doing. You play but Grand honestly, Arbiter. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're done painted the target. Well, so the sorry. other thing is we have a, we have a unique play group in that. Um, I want to say that we're probably among the most petty people, uh, <laughs> and so it makes it especially hard for us to to not. Uh, how do I put this as be- best I can? I guess it's just to not take things as personally because we. We all will immediately assess each other as the worst person on the table, even if we're clearly ahead. 
So even if we're the furthest one ahead, if anyone does anything, we're immediately like, oh my God. Oh my God, CEDH. You know, a smothering tide comes out on turn four and everyone's like, no. Oh, who did that? You know, so it's like, I think that's part of it too, is you have to assess your play group. I think it, it's dependent on how everyone plays. Um, but I agree with you. I, I don't think anyone would play land destruction in our in our play group, but I think we've we made the rule, like if you're going to do it, you may as well be ready to win the next turn because it's just not fun. Yeah, it just drags the game. Yeah. If you're going to obliterate me, like, please have a, a, a way to win yeah. the game soon. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. but honestly, how much time do we have, actually? Uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Come on, give it to us. Well, I was going to say, CEH is, like, defined by specific cards. Like, there's a lot of warning flags. Like, if you see a food chain out, if you see uh, someone play Doomsday, if you see someone play Isochron Scepter with, I don't know, Kind so, of spell I have a question real quick before we finish this up. What if someone played, like, for example, someone puts out puts Flash in their deck, but there's no Protean Hulk. Or someone puts Protean Hulk, but there's no Flash. Or someone puts Thassa's Oracle, but, you know, like, or Lab yeah, Maniac. Lab Man do we consider it. that? Do we consider that CDH? No, because I, don't, I wouldn't consider it because there's more pieces okay. than just that. But I'm saying, like, Food Chain, there's, like, only, there's not oh, yeah, that yeah. many possibilities, like, you know what they're trying to do. Yeah. And same with Doomsday because it puts only five cards left in your library. Oh my god, Doomsday so So scary. you you pretty much set up your combo that way. And you already know, okay, this guy's trying to win. Yeah. That's the only way you're gonna play Doomsday if you're gonna win. Yeah, yeah. I, I think our, our thoughts are all coherent. Um yeah. we, we all mm-hmm. kind of agree on that note. The so next five minutes we're gonna go ahead and discuss uh how we define our power levels. Um mm-hmm. So I'm curious. I, I want to see how each one of you defines your, and I actually want to. No, I want no. us each to assess what the most powerful deck is that each one of us has. I'm oh, curious. Yikes. We have okay, so, this conversation. So I'll make a graph. But I made one a graph. Day. Oh, I made a graph oh. right here. Okay. This is consistency, okay. power level. Okay. As you can see, the more consistent you are, <laughs> the stronger. Uh, no, that makes sense. Is. That makes sense. Like how well yeah. you perform each game. Okay. Well, how well you're not you your deck performs. Like well, okay, yeah, fair. Oh, okay. Like if it's consistent, you know, then that means it's strong. But that's because that's when it's tuned. Obviously, if you're gonna have a janky deck that's relying on one, two, or three cards that you can't tutor for, that's not a very consistent deck. Like Boros vehicles. Um, I don't think that's ever gonna go above a four in my book. I think that will consistently get you a vehicle. But the thing is, vehicles <laughs> have, do not have the power level to, yeah. you know, back it up. It's like you're spending all your mana for, you're wasting your mana. You're not getting the value back, I guess, is why yeah. it wouldn't be good. I define, I, I, I agree with you, but I think also it just depends on, and I mean, maybe this is dumb because I know a lot of decks only use commanders for color identity. But I think if a commander has good value intrinsically built in, I think that immediately makes them more powerful. Yeah, like, like a Tulane. Like a Chulain, like a Nalila, like a Kadena, like, like an Elsha. Like a Markov. Like a Markov. Well, you don't even have to play your commander. Yeah, like an Elsha, the infinite, one of the most powerful cards in Magic right now. Um, <laughs> like uh, Mina and Den. Uh, like a sure. Krufix. Uh, you know? Like okay, a like a, like a a Webble Lady. Um, you know? <laughs> it yeah. was fine right there. <laughs> what about you, Josh? What do you think? Uh, I, I think he's right. I, it really all comes down to your consistency. Um, and it, it's really hard to judge that because we really are only basing off of our play groups and let's say we bring out sure. let's say we bring out our best deck to uh, i don't know the next seattle commander fest or whatever fest happens um i was gonna say another fest but i'm not gonna say that um and let's say you get stomped let's say you just get shut down and you're just like man i thought i had a nine clearly i'm at a four at this group and it, it's all per- it's all i want to say perspective that's not think that's the right word but it's all based on who play you're group. playing with it's really and... the meta yeah it's well it's also dependent group, on yeah. on who not just who you're playing against but all, like in terms of players but also commanders too because for example i i thought when we went to seattle we had pretty decently six six oh. seven decks oh. and then we played them against a derevian and Nar, uh narset so it's like of course we're gonna lose <laughs> like those are oh, I remember co- those are competitive competitive Derevi's commanders you know down the entire time and then narset it was a stacks yeah oh, that was a... so that's what i'm saying though so it's like deck, you know it was a good time i don't i think it's harder to assess your power level when you're playing decks that are considerably weaker than than other people's very fair that's very fair you know what you know, makes that's sense like yeah so i think, I think... only ever gauge a power level if you consistently play in the meta because if you play a deck one time with a random person it's yeah that's not a big enough pool 
to pull from like your your statistics mm. you know because what if that that one game is that game where you had a mulligan four times oh because you can't yeah. find a land Fair. you know that's true that's true, true. So let's talk about the let's talk about these decks that you're saying are our strongest ones because for some all right so you're very excited about that go ahead Steve. because I, I we need to say one so I think if we had if I had to say Ben's strongest deck I would say it's Mean and Den right yeah. like I, okay. I don't think that's I don't think that's yeah that land deck sure. at all I, confusing I, well, we we all agree I I think that deck has performed the best consistently yeah. throughout yeah. our entire Agreed. I think it has the highest win rate right that's what we said that's why we need to go for him that's. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, again, that's, that's, I always do. Just for clarity, I always do. Moving on, like, okay, Josh's. Okay. <laughs> ben, what do you think about Josh's? Um, shoot, I think his Elsha's creeping up. It is creeping and, up. And I was going to say that. I'm not done. And his four oh? color one's creeping up. But his locus his four color is. Oh, God. his four color is the stupid um, bird. Rayhan. Rayhan. <laughs> but I think his locus is. You're talking about Ishai. You're not talking about Rayhan. Ishai. There you go. In okay, terms yeah. of getting, in terms of taking the deck and playing it in another play group, it does the same thing each time, kind of thing. Yeah, like it's, his locus like, card is good. Very tuned. Like yeah. he's gonna draw cards. He's gonna he's gonna wheel. I'm gonna let us all locus. draw cards. We're all gonna have a good time. Yeah. And then discard them, and then you know, yeah. and all this stuff. So I feel like that's the most in terms of. I food, agree. That's I cool. agree. And yeah. uh, well, since we're done talking about me, let's go ahead and talk about Steven here. <clears throat> his um, most powerful. Oof, you first, Josh. I'm a, Okay, I think power wise, out of all the ones, the ones that I groan at the most when I see it played is probably Trulane, and it's only been recent too. When I see Trulane, I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) you guys know what I mean? (laughs) I I also. I won't disagree. I also was going to say Trulane. It's very strong. Um, Let me think. Okay, never mind. He does have a Kadena that's green also. I was going to say the green really makes it. Because he's used to playing blue, yeah, and green, just that combination, green, blue, and white, and what the commander actually does is like super value. Yeah, it's it's like enhanced um, uh, evolution. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's cool. like, kind of like the land deck almost, you know, because you kind get to of. place the land. Yeah, well, well now that I added that. boundless realms from the mystery box, yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's time. I appreciate the conversation around our decks. Uh, I think we're just gonna cut it here. Thanks for watching.